Hello guys, good evening, everybody. Hi. Good evening, teacher. Hello, welcome. Good evening, teacher. Hello, everybody, good welcome evening. to our English Good evening, class. teacher. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Let's start. So, so, please. <laughs> Muy bien, es un gusto estar acá con ustedes este día, eh, especialmente porque iniciamos eh, nuestras clases de inglés, ¿verdad? ya que es importante, pues queremos ya nuestros pasos con el idioma y podamos aprender de la mejor manera. Así que, eh, bienvenidos a todos, a cada uno de ustedes, y al mismo tiempo felicitarlos por este paso que están dando. Es un paso muy importante para ustedes, porque vamos potenciando lo que es nuestro idioma inglés. Ustedes que han venido de un proceso de inglés básico, Básico, principiantes 1, 2 y 3, pre-intermedio y ahora intermedio 1, intermedio 2. Entonces, es importante que podamos destacar esas capacidades que tenemos y que sabemos que el inglés es algo que tenemos que practicar constantemente para tener un dominio acerca de este idioma. Entonces, es por ello de que pues, les felicito y vamos a dar unos puntos importantes en cuanto a nuestra preparación de inglés durante este periodo. Y así me voy a presentar también para que ustedes pues, me conozcan. Y pues iniciamos con nuestras clases. Como sabemos, es un módulo eh, de 16 clases eh, y vamos a ir aprendiendo constantemente cada uno de ellos. Así que vamos a iniciar. Bueno, eh, mi nombre es William David García. Ustedes me pueden decir 
teacher William, teacher David, or uh, professor, como es una como teacher William, feel comfortable. Eh, bueno, pues puedo comentarles que tengo especialidad de profesorado en el idioma inglés. También tengo la carrera de licenciatura en el idioma inglés también. Eh, ciencias de la educación en el área de inglés y educación, entonces tengo ese, pues, esa especialidad. Eh, también he estado trabajando como parte de nuestra experiencia en Radio International. Eh, tengo alrededor de 16 años dando clases como docente. Nosotros ya tenemos varios años ya de experiencia en esto. Entonces, pues es, es bastante importante para mí poder ayudarles a que ustedes también puedan potenciar sus capacidades en el idioma inglés en todos los niveles, tanto básico, intermedio, avanzado, preparación del TOEFL, preparación del TOEIC y todas las evaluaciones externas. También, pues he sido uh, traductor, también soy traductor e intérprete de lo que es el idioma inglés y facilitador eh, desde el 2020, específicamente con eh, inglés corporativo. Entonces, pues tengo con ellos eh, este tiempo desde el 2020, pero tengo alrededor, alrededor de 16 años trabajando en lo que es el idioma. Bien, entonces también parte de nuestra formación académica, planificación, didáctica, y el, el inglés se maneja en todos los niveles, tanto básico, intermedio, avanzado. Así es. Entonces, para que conozcan un poquito de mí, acerca de este proceso, y también hay alguna información importante que quiero que ustedes conozcan en cuanto a nuestro curso de inglés, como ustedes ya tienen tiempo con nosotros, ya las conocen, pero es importante volver a destacarlas para que pues, quede claro para todos nosotros cómo va el proceso. Y primero, eh, sabemos de que es necesario tener el 80% en promedio de tareas y evaluaciones para poder complementar el curso satisfactoriamente. Es decir, que tenemos que tener todas las actividades realizadas arriba del 80%. Eh, hay bastante flexibilidad para que se pueda trabajar en los ejercicios, pueda adelantar ejercicios, pueda avanzar y no se vaya quedando con que dicho, fíjese que no, no logré hacerlo, porque usted tiene la oportunidad de accesar a estos ejercicios eh, desde antes. Las tareas se encuentran en la plataforma en la, con la que han estado trabajando eh, en la plataforma de inglés corporativo eh, y se recomienda trabajar en ellas justo después de cada clase. ¿verdad? Después de una, una clase usted puede entrar, son bastante breves los ejercicios, usted los completa y ya queda eh, terminado el ejercicio. Y como dice entre paréntesis, puede adelantar contenidos. Es decir, que usted puede avanzar también, por ejemplo, este tema ya lo conozco, entonces puede avanzar un poquito. Y así pues usted va avanzando también sin ningún inconveniente. Entonces, también podemos decir que todas las tareas de los temas ya cubiertos tienen que estar completas antes de cada viernes a la medianoche, ya que ese registro es enviado a Instafor semanalmente. Es importante tomarlo en cuenta. Entonces, eh, es necesario pues, que ustedes estén a la mano en cuanto a los ejercicios y las tareas en la fecha establecida. Entonces, es importante tomar esto en cuenta. Cada viernes a medianoche, este registro ya tiene que estar completo de todos los ejercicios que ustedes realicen. Entonces, tienen esa oportunidad de poder hacerlo. Entonces, material de apoyo será compartido a criterio del profesor en formato digital. En este caso, pues para los que estuvieron en, a través de, del grupo de WhatsApp, pues ahí les compartí la presentación que vamos a tener ahora en la clase. Entonces, Ah, igual también ustedes tienen el material, el manual también está en la plataforma, eh, en este caso de inglés corporativo, donde ustedes pueden entrar y pueden investigar esa información. Entonces, es bastante valioso eh, tomarlo en cuenta. ¿Qué más podemos decir eh, de esta evaluación y de este proceso que tenemos a continuación? Eh, tareas y evaluaciones, hay eh, cuatro semanas exclusivamente, pues tenemos la sección 1 y, y la sección 2 que se tienen que completar en, un, en una semana, es decir, en esta semana, como el ejemplo que eh, Luego tenemos la semana 2, que es sección 3, y el midterm, que también es en la sección 3, y una prueba que se llama midterm, que es una prueba de algunos ejercicios que hemos visto en lo que es la semana, la sección 3 y la sección 2. Tenemos también lo que es la semana 3, eh, estaremos estudiando la sección 4 de nuestro material. Y tenemos también la semana 4, que es la sección 5 y el examen final, ¿verdad? Esto es para las tareas de evaluaciones, para que usted lo tome en cuenta. Eh, y esto pues nos puede servir a nosotros para irles diciendo cada semana. Bueno, este, esta semana nos toca trabajar esto, esta semana nos toca trabajar aquello. 
Recuerden que todas las clases quedan grabadas por alguna situación. Si usted quiere hacer un feedback, una retroalimentación sobre la clase, pues yo no entendí esto, o de repente el internet se me fue y no pude ver esta parte de la clase, usted tiene la oportunidad de ver las grabaciones y, y puede hacer una retroalimentación. También en el grupo usted puede compartir alguna, alguna consulta y yo sé que tanto el maestro como los compañeros también pueden ayudarse mutuamente a completar los ejercicios o alguna duda, alguna inquietud que usted tenga. Es también por eso es la estrategia del grupo para que pues, podamos compartir cierta información bastante valiosa. ¿En ¿Qué más podemos decir acerca de las tareas y evaluaciones? Que, que esperamos completarlas en las semanas establecidas iniciando este día. Vamos a ver la siguiente. Hay normas de convivencia que también tenemos que tomar mucho en cuenta por el beneficio de todos nosotros, de todos los que estamos en este proceso. El botón tiene que estar en silencio. Eh, si usted no va a participar, pues tiene que tener en silencio. Eh, si va a participar, pues usted lo enciende y hace su participación sin ningún inconveniente. Lista de asistencia según programa. Nombre completo. Eh, tiene que estar el nombre completo de ustedes. ¿Verdad? En las pantallas. Por ejemplo, yo estoy viendo al de Elba Carolina Vázquez Flores. También veo acá el de Katia Graciela Juan de Canray. Entonces, así tiene que estar el nombre completo. Ya que, pues, Insafor verifica los videos y monitorea que todos estén acá. Sus Pero nombres no, no, como no, 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 nosotros tenemos acá. Entonces, así sería de esta manera. Bueno, seguimos con esta parte. Um, Se puede usar, bueno, cámara encendida siempre tiene que estar. Es otro requisito también en Instafor. Y también en la participación activa y uso de chats. También usted puede utilizar el chat. Por ejemplo, acá me escribieron que alguien está teniendo problemas con la conexión a internet. Y gracias ahí por estar informando. Eh, levantar la mano también cuando usted tenga alguna consulta, alguna participación, usted lo puede hacer sin ningún problema. Eh, siempre eh, levantar la mano, siempre mantener el respeto. ¿Alguna consulta o duda que usted tenga sobre estos puntos? Hola, sí, aquí estoy. Sí. Hello. No, teacher. Muy bien, ok, bueno. Bueno, no hay preguntas, no hay consultas. ¿Estamos bien? Sí, sí, yo... Eh... Bueno, eh, good evening everyone. Sí, sí, solo tengo, eh, me quedó una duda respecto a lo de la lista de asistencia, ¿verdad? Que según programa dice ahí, pero no, no entendí muy bien esa parte. Ah, es que pasamos la asistencia eh, en toda la clase, eh, pasamos la asistencia, eh, ya que es, eh, Insafor monitorea la asistencia de ustedes. Entonces, eso sería la asistencia. Sí. Y quiero que monitoreen acá esto. Entonces, son como los puntos importantes que la mayoría ya sabemos, por los que han estado en el programa desde hace bastante tiempo. Entonces... Eh, es importante pues que cumplan estos criterios que Insafor nos indica a nosotros para que podamos avanzar en nuestras clases. Así que pues eh, es un gusto conocerles a todos. Aquí estoy viendo sus nombres y espero que en el proceso pues vayamos participando, vayamos compartiendo. Una de las claves, porque ustedes son nivel intermedio, ya es un nivel eh, ya caminando hacia el avanzado, la participación tiene que ser activa e importante y full inglés. ¿Les parece? Yes, are you ready? Yes, teacher. <laughs> yes, teacher. All right, that's pretty cool. So for that reason, we're going to start today with our classes. So welcome you all. 
And before the whistle starts, I just want to start my presentation right here with you guys. Just want to give me one second. Okay, so let's start today with our class. So welcome you all. And especially one of the main purposes about this class is to have the opportunity to communicate actively with the language and also feel really comfortable with the communication skills. Don't worry if you feel a little bit uh, frustrated or you got some doubts to understand the class. But the goal is that we can learn from every single class step by step learning. And this is like uh, something that we have to follow and to feel confident when, when learning a language. I know that for some of you to be like more natural to listen, someone is speaking in English, but, but for some others to be a little bit more, um, you know, you know, challenging. But we learn every day with vocabulary, with expressions, with words in English, so we can make a difference about that. And uh, I just want to encourage you to learn. Remember, if you have questions, uh, if you have questions or doubts related to or our class, you got a freedom to ask. And that's why you, you have to feel more comfortable to communicate in English. Siéntase confiado, pregunte lo que tenga que preguntar. It's important, right? I need to make sure that you understand, that you learn, that you are, you know, in the process to, to practice, right? So that's why it's going to be opportunity for all of you to practice in this, in this section. So let's start today with the topic. We have a general topic here in the class, so it's cold. And this is called two parts words will for the class. This is the topic. In this case, this is related to grammar. Because it's grammar, yeah, like, you know, trying to get that part. So let's click in here. And we have this one, the general objective. So I just want to ask uh, Dina Elizabeth that can you help me to read the general objective, please, uh, Dina Elizabeth? Read it, teacher. Yes, read, yes. Okay. General objective. In this lesson, participate will listen and practice a conversation between family members. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. That's the that's the main part of this. So this is the, the general objective for this um, section one. It's like listen and practice conversations between family members. This is going to be like the general part of this. And, and that is like the main part of this. Uh, that's one second. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Teacher. Hello, hello. I have a Veamos si podemos modificar eso. Just give me one second. Okay. Um, no sé si me escuchan ahora. ¿Me escuchan por ahí? ¿Sí? Sí, de escucharse se le escucha, profe. Eh, buenas noches. Lo, el problema es que se escucha muy ecoso y casi no le entiendo. Bueno, en mi parte casi no le entiendo, pero um, bueno, un gusto. Igual, no sé los demás igual, creo. Igual, teacher. Creo que ahorita sí ya se escucha, pero casi no se le entiende porque se escucha como eco, no muy claro. Eh, ahora igual, ya hice una modificación acá, ustedes me dicen. Ahorita sí se le ha mejorado. Yo escucho que ha mejorado, teacher. Ah, ok, perfecto, perfecto. Bueno, entonces mucho mejor. Gracias. Bueno, entonces, eh, vámonos ya a la lección. We go to the lesson. Y veamos acá. Vamos con la siguiente parte. En este caso tenemos acá en this section, right? Read the following article. We got the common complaints of family with teenagers. That's the name of this um, topic. We are talking about some, you know, in a family, 
there are different problems or situations that maybe could affect families and uh, parents complaining, you know, something about teenagers, about kids, sons and daughters. So let's see what happened with this part. Common complaints of family to teenagers. You know, do you know what complaint means? Do you know what is complaint? Do you know the meaning about complaints? Saben qué significa? Yes, teacher. Yes, yeah. teacher. Complaint is when you are not uh, happy with with the product uh, of maybe you bought. When you when you say that you are not uh, in agree with something. That's correct. So in this case, we're talking about complaints. We're talking about uh, something that we don't like, that we um, we don't agree, we don't like. It's not good for you, or it's not convenient. That's what we call complaints. Like to say in Spanish, like una queja, right? Because we don't like it. You know, we complain about some teenagers. We have the son of them, like parents about. In this case, my kids, they don't help around the house. That is, could be a common complaint. You know what? You have to clean your clean your room, wash the dishes, cook, but you don't help around the house. That is a complaint that most of the time parents say about it. Don't listen to my advice. Don't listen to my advice when you are trying to help their kids to guide them in the right path, and they don't understand about what they are talking. You know, and those we say, then listen to my advice. And also we have a uh, have exchange friends when they have some friends that are not good for you. You don't give an approval about that. You know what? Uh, con los amigos, con los, con los amigos con los que te reunís, no soy de acuerdo. So it's like have strange friends. That's another problem. Dress badly and have ugly hairstyles. And no one come and complain. Deje participar al perrito, hombre. <laughs> we also have watched too much TV, for example. That is another problem. Like, you know what? Uh, watch too much television. Don't study enough. We have some of them. So I need a volunteer for helping me to read my parents. Who wants to help me to read them? Who wants, to, who wants to help me to read the, my parents' vocabulary? Los que están acá, ¿quién me ayuda a leerlos? Voluntario. Jessica, thank you so much. Okay, my parents. Eh, creo que veo bien. Es N la que está al principio, ¿verdad? Yes, uh, my parents. Uh, two okay. parents. Now about chores and homework. Don't like my friends. Eh, ¿Cómo se dice esa palabra? Critis. Criticize. Uh, Criticize my appearance. Uh, don't respect my pri privacy. Uh, privacy. 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 Always tell me what to do. Don't listen to my opinions. That's correct. That is like the most common thing about it, right? So, talking about these questions, I want you to take a short time to. Uh, check the following questions we have down there. Have you ever heard parents or children make these complaints? Which ones? Um, that is the first one. And the second one is like, have you ever had any complaints like this about family members? ¿Han escuchado de padres o, o niños quejándose de estas cosas? ¿Cuáles? Ustedes piensen cuáles son las más comunes que ustedes han escuchado. Y han tenido alguna queja como estas de algunos miembros de su familia. So quiero que piensen en esto. I want you to think about it. And also you can answer the following uh, questions. So we will take a short time to socialize this information here. Y por unos minutitos para que piensen qué respuesta podría ser de estas dos. Okay. And then we will request like two or three participations for this class. 
Entonces, responden estas preguntas en base a su experiencia. Si tienen dudas, pues las pueden hacer sin ningún problema. Hi, Nadia. Hi. In my case, my, my son say one time, you don't respect my privacy. Yeah, that is very common for teenagers, right? They complain about that. Thank you so much. Someone else for the first one. Someone else for the first one. Alguien más que nos conteste la primera. Thank you. Yes, in my guys, in my family, my niece always said uh, her parents always tell me what to do and don't respect my privacy. Yeah, that's the same story all the time, you know, and kids and, and parents complain about that, especially kids, right? Thank you so much, Erika. Someone else? Teacher, me, Katia. Yes, Katia, we'll listen to you. When I, when I was a teenager, <laughs> um, great, great, Thank you so much. I totally understand you this one. <laughs> yes, and, and my kids, and they wash too much pee. Okay, thank you so much for that. All right, someone else for the first one. Think about it. Okay. Uh, hi. I'm listening. Uh, I think one of the most common uh, complaints in the families is when the kids don't wake, don't awake early in the mornings. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I think Sarah. Uh, Sarah Nana. Hey teacher, in my case, and, and my son is um, um, uh, the live music and um, reggaeton. Um, it, in, in esas cosas, we sing. So like reggaeton and you know music and fashion things about the teenagers. Yes. Yes, yeah, oh, oh, uh, oh, opinion the the vestment. The dressing, the dressing way. Okay, thank you. Uh, someone else, uh, Dina, I guess. Dina. Don't don't listen to my advents and watch too much TV. Don't study enough. Okay, that's understandable, you know, that, that happens. Okay, I want you to go on to the next one and I want you to check the, the second one. Have you ever had any complaints like this about family members? Think about the number, the second one. Uh, have you ever had any complaints like this about family members? Like, you know, um, because those both questions are pretty close, so you can like socialize that part. Someone else? Be uh, sure. Yes. Sorry, it's me, Kathy, again. No sé si soy yo, pero se queda como, como mudo o desbotado siempre en la, la, la clase. No sé si soy mi casa. Creo que está teniendo problemas con la señal, porque se escucha así como cortado, si no me equivoco. Ahí es, donde, ahí es donde recomendaba el teacher anterior que apagara la cámara porque como que los datos no son suficientes. Entonces recomendaba que apagara la, la pantalla para escuchar bien porque ella también se le oye cortado. Okay. Pero nunca había tenido ese inconveniente. Me pasa, por ahí vamos a revisar el inter. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's great. Thank you. 
Pero nunca <laughs> okay, uh, Alejandro, your answer. Have you ever had any complaints like this about family members? Maybe teacher, but when I was a child, when, when I was a child, because I have 23 years uh, that I don't have family uh, next to me. So I, I don't remember some, some complaint about them. <laughs> oh so that's why it's like not so common to you nowadays. After yes. All right, thank you. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, don't have a wrong. Okay, este, bueno, vamos con la siguiente parte. Eh, que está aquí, permítanme. Mm -hmm. Vamos a tener una conversation here. Tenemos una conversación. Y vamos a tratar de eh, leer la conversación. Y vamos a practicar esta conversación y responderemos dos preguntas. En este caso es como making requests. Ese sería como, como un punto importante en esta parte. Right? So that is making requests. Um, we have Mr. Phil, Jason, and we have Lisa, three people in the conversation. So after we practice this conversation, we'll take a short time to uh, also practice the conversation. And I will just send a pronunciation about this conversation in the chat. So just give me one second. Bien, eh, vamos, a, vamos a compartir en este momento pues, la conversación. Eh, quiero que usted la escuche. Y luego vamos a formar una conversación de unos, unos minutos. Y eh, practicar su conversación con los compañeros. So you will practice the conversation with your eh, classmates here. Okay? Así que eh, igual yo voy a mandar por el grupo, por el grupo de WhatsApp. Voy a mandar eh, también el audio de esta conversación para que usted la pueda escuchar y y pues pueda trabajar en la pronunciación porque es importante, especialmente para el nivel intermedio, la pronunciación es vital. The pronunciation is vital. It's very important. Okay. Jason, turn down the TV a little, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I turn it down. That's, that's better, thanks. Um, Lisa, please pick up your thing. They are all over the living room floor. In a minute, mom, I'm on the phone. Okay, but do it as soon as you hang out. Sure, no problem. Goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. Look at this, look at this. Ok, les he compartido esta conversation por, por el grupo de WhatsApp. Entonces, vamos a contestar las dos preguntas. We have two questions that we will specialize. Have you had some problems selecting a channel at home? Es decir, ¿han tenido ustedes problemas eligiendo algún canal en, en, en su casa cuando de repente está, yo quiero ver este programa, no, pero yo quiero ver este otro. I want to watch this TV show, no, but I, I don't want to watch that, it's like a little boring. You should watch a movie, like, like you know, discussing about what TV show could be the best one for all the family, especially when you have one TV in the living room and everybody to watch the same TV program. So you have to agree what TV program or channel you would like to watch. You make an agreement with the family. Think about that. So you think about it, right? What are we going to do? Let's get together. And this is like a question. You're going to discuss this question with your group. What are your preferences when watching TV? ¿Cuáles son sus preferencias cuando eh, ven televisión? ¿Qué, ¿Qué es lo que prefieren ver? Ah, movies or series or comedy 
or shows or you can like discuss about that. Ustedes eh, pueden elegir qué le gustaría a usted eh, ver. Entonces, este es como el otro punto. Uh, para eso vamos a formar unos break rooms, vamos a formar unos grupos y usted eh, va a compartir esta conversación y va a interactuar e intercambiar estas dos preguntas entre los compañeros. Esto es lo que vamos a hacer. En, ¿Está claro qué es lo que vamos a hacer? ¿Sí? Yes. Yes, teacher. Excelente. Entonces vamos a armar los break rooms and you will have the opportunity to socialize the questions here and also practice the conversation because it's most one of the most valuable, the participation. So actively you can practice and it's going to be more natural to you guys. Okay, let's just go and see in this one. Ustedes van a ver ahí en la pantalla la indicación de que pues, entra al grupo, practican la conversación y luego pues este, responden las preguntas en el campo. Uh, Maritza, Juan Eduardo. Uh, Maritza. Maritza, are you there? Maritza. I we like the the same program. <laughs> okay. In my case, my my son and my daughter the different ends and both my in your uh in your bedrooms. Uh, bedroom, yeah. Ah. And I have so, the If if you have a son and daughter, you can say son and daughter siblings. You can In say siblings. Case, it's yes. a sibling because I si don't have siblings. <laughs> yes, one girl and one boy. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't have the siblings. <laughs> you don't have. You don't have children, Andrea. No, 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 no have. yet. Or you don't want to 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 have I, any so... any time. <laughs> In this moment, <laughs> you don't, you don't I don't have, want. Uh, you don't. You don't want to have children. <laughs> 
I don't in this moment I don't me too I, I, I don't want to have okay no you don't have I want that you don't want funny. either do Dennis uh, I think okay. I'm I'm very young yet okay yeah it's it's okay how, how many how old are you okay uh, I'm 20, 24 years old. Oh yeah, ah, you are very yeah. young yet. Very young. You're very young, yes. And and do you have uh, have you had problems to <laughs> to get a program a TV program? Well, uh, we don't usually watch TV in my house, but when where we... I send you the image. I think that is the same. Um, I me que the question yeah. um eh, sería eh, bueno? eh, eh. Is... have you had some problems selecting a channel at home? Entonces, Katia. Um, I am uh, I I am read the uh, Mr. Phillips. Okay. And you, you read Jax, Jason. And Elva read um Lisa. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Jason. teacher <laughs> okay guys we came back you know congratulations for the work done i keep listening to all of you talking and also practicing the conversation and responding to some questions related to you know making requests that was something very valuable we go on to the next part of the conversation here and uh, let's see what happened with the next part and also um we could like discuss a little bit about you know making requests and, and thinking about that right and um, we would practice a kind of topic that we call two parts verbs will for responding to requests. There are some verbs that we call them uh, phrasal verbs, and also we most of the time combine a verb plus a preposition plus, plus a noun to make a different word. In that case, we have um, a verb, for example, turn down. We have the first one turn down the television. So you can say that turn down the television or turn the TV down, right? So you can separate it, the phrasal verb, in that case, turn down related to when you, you don't want to watch TV, so you like turn it off, right? So we can say that. And also we have the next one that we call pick up your things. The action like pick up, 
your things, the stuff, things you have uh, on the floor, down somewhere specifically place. And also pick your things up. So you can like separate it, the, the verb, and also in that case, the preposition that we have that, like pick up, uh, turn down. And also with pronouns, turn it down. So instead of saying television, you use a pronoun. You say, turn the TV down. So it's better to say, turn it down. So you replace the name by a, pre a pronoun. And also, we we're talking about things. Well, instead of things, we could use them. In that case, a pronoun, pick them up. So that's one of the common things here. And also, we have requests and responses. Please turn down the music. Please turn down the music. Remember that it's very important to use please, especially when you're trying to give a command, give an indication, give an instructions. It's very important that we just like add please in a formal, in a polite way. So it's very valuable to do that. I always recommend that. And also we have, um, okay, I turn it down. I turn it down. So instead of saying, I turn the TV down, I prefer to say, I turn it down using a pronoun. So you can change in this case, the noun uh, by a uh, pronoun, for example, if this, the meaning is going to be the same, we know that. And uh, also for request and response, pick your clothes, please. Why it's important to make a request in response? You have to be very formal when you request something. You cannot give a command, like an imperative form, like, you know what, do this one, clean this one, pick it up, turn it down, go to your room. So it's like very, very, um, strong and this is not formal when we when we request something using please always always is important to use please in a in a conversation with people with people you know it's very valuable to do that in a formal conversation pick up your clothes please sure i pick them up so we can see some examples about this two-part verbs will for responding a request but i would like to share with you some other examples of all these structures. Okay, look at this one. Two parts for will for responding to requests. Uh, we, we have some uh, will to respond some information, especially like uh, with nouns, turn out the television, turn the TV down, pick up your things like examples that we have also share in, uh, in Spanish, by any chance you would like to double check vocabulary or the meaning of some words right here so you can check that. Look at this. Uh, please turn down the music. Okay, I'll turn it down. Pick up your clothes, please. Sure, I pick them up. So you can check how it goes. Uh, for example, when you're with your friends, with, with people around, do you, and you are going to give a command, you're going to give an instruction, or something, do you use please? Or you don't usually do it with people you know. For example, when I need I need a favor or I need someone does something, and most of the time I use please because I, I, I could sound a little bit rude when I'm trying to say something. It's just better to say, I'm sorry, please, could you do that for me? I would really appreciate it. So what do you think? I think that is more polite. Do you use please in when you ask for something? Yes, I, I think that uh, I use please because uh, I think that uh, when I don't know the, the people, I, uh, I, I prefer to uh, be respect, respectful. Thank you, that's important. Someone else? I think is the informal communication because it's in the house i i when i say uh, my daughter uh, turn down the tv <laughs> like the uh, same to our order no, i don't know uh, you're given an, an instruction you're given an instruction but in, in a rude way not all not rude but you know could sound like unpolite definitely Okay, thank you. But that happens because it's our family, so we feel comfortable. You know, we, we could say that 
please. And we don't say please. Okay, someone else? Uh, someone else would like to give an opinion about it? Uh, I think if you want the other person to do your request, uh, you always need to, to use the, the please to, to be more polite. Exactly. Exactly. Are the, like we started at school the magic words. When you were studying at school, the teacher used to say, you know what? When somebody comes, when you see someone, say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So magic words, please, I'm sorry, may I say send out okay? Look at the next part here, and we go on to the next one and making requests in a language. Okay, look at this one. So Alejandro, could you help us to read the first part of this valuable information? Can you do me the favor, Alejandro Quintanilla, to read the first part of the first paragraph? Let me, let me see. Uh, do you want to read? Exactly. Yes. Okay, making requests in a language which is not your mother tongue can sometimes be nerve rocking as you are always want to make sure that you are polite when making the request don't worry out today excuse i'm sorry don't worry out today we are going to be talking about a couple of ways which you can make requests in english but still be polite Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Um, okay, someone else, Ana Mendoza, can you help me to read the second part using will? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Using will to make requests, will is the auxiliary verb for the future simple tense, but can also be used, used when requesting someone to do something. It is important to peer in mind that will is a more casual way of make, making the request than using the conditional. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And also it is Regina, can you help us read the example? Example, will you close the door, please? Will you help me cook dinner, please? Will he do his homework before we go out, please? Will can also be used in the similar fashion to can when re requesting someone to do something. Exactly right. So that's one of the things. Um, always we use will and to request something. Will, will we close the door, please? Uh, will you help me with this one? So it's important also to use place as a final way. Those are like one of the things, making requests in a language. And uh, when we have friends or people that we have a lot of confidence, most of the time, we just like say, you know what, do this one, try to do this one. And also it is common uh, because we are friends, because we have confidence. But perhaps people we don't know, it will be kind of rude or hard that we don't say yes because we're not giving a command or an instruction. So look at this one. Complete the request with these words, then compare it with the partner. The books, the toys, the radio, your code, the TV, your book, the jar, the lie, the trash, your cigarette. So pick up the toys, please. Turn off, please. Clean, please put, please turn down, please take off, hang, please take out, please put out and turn on please. So try to match the, the vocabulary we have that right about there with the, the images and try to match them with the statements that we have down there, okay? So I will give you some minutes to do that one. And meanwhile, I will pass the attendance list. Voy a mencionar por ahí la asistencia y usted me dice presente. Entonces, pues ahí, eh, Recuerden que pues, eso está en el manual, eh, en el manual que está en la plataforma. 
y también está en la presentación que les he compartido, que están en esos dos medios, eh, esta información que está acá. Entonces, voy a dejar de compartir pantalla para, para, que, para poder pasar la asistencia. ¿Ok? Hello. Hello. Me levanté un momento, no sé qué vamos a hacer. Hello. Esperar. Es que no, casi no escucho. Eh, ¿No sabe qué hacer o cómo? El teacher está tomando la asistencia en este momento. Yes. Este, en este momento estoy verificando lo de la asistencia y estamos trabajando en este ejercicio que, estoy, que voy a compartir para referencia. Entonces, se completa la que es, va a completar la frase con la con el compañero el micrófono Bueno, quiero ver, quiero verlos. Eh, yo les menciono su nombre y usted me dice presente, ¿ok? Eh, Alejandro José Quintanilla. Presente. Okay. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ir. Ok. Uh, Andrea Geraldina Sánchez. Present, present teacher. Okay. Eh, Andrea Michelle García. 
Thank you. Uh, Blanca Marisol Vargas. Present teacher. Uh, Boris Martin Salinas. Present teacher. Thank you. Brian Isaac. Present. Thank you. Carlos Jose Alfonso Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. Denis Isaac Gomez Rodas. Present. Thank you. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez. Uh, Dina Elizabeth Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Elba Carolina Vázquez Flores. Present teacher. Erika eh, Mayor de Antonio Flores. Present. Ok. Uh, Francisco Alberto Lemos. Here teacher. Thank you. Ina Hernández Soya. Here teacher. Thank you so much. I have a list of Alante Mendoni. Present. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth San Santillana Cortez. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Janet Sanchez Valencia. Present. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo. Katia Graciela Juan. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, María Lucila Soto Ponce. María Lucila Soto. Marita Isabel, Isabel Méndez. Presente, teacher. Y Nadia Solina Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh, Noemí Alicia Estrada. Present, teacher. Eh, Oscar Armando Cruz Hernández. Present, teacher. Thank you. Ricardo de Jesús Ramírez Silva. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh, Sara Nauda Guzmán Cubía. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh, Vidal Edelio Mejía García. Vidal Edelio. Present, teacher. Thank you. And Wendy Abigail Rivera. Present, teacher. Thank you. Wilfredo Mendoza Ramos. Wilfredo Mendoza. Not here. Okay. Okay, just to conclude this part of the class, I just want to ask you about the following exercise. Okay, the number two, turn what? Turn off three. What do you think to be? Number two. Tell me about the number two. Turn. Uh, the radio off. The radio. Okay, the radio. The, the radio. Okay. All right, cool. You have two choices there. So the number three, clean. 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 Clean, the yard. clean the yard. Okay, clean the jar. Please. Please. Okay, good. That's okay. That's great. Uh, what about the number four? Uh, please put, put the, the trash, trash away. Put the trash, trash away. away. Yeah, put the trash away. That's okay. okay. Uh, number five, please turn down. DTV. TV. Television. Okay. Please, please, please um, turn down the TV. Okay. Please turn down the television. That would be a, a possible choice. Okay. Number six. Please take off your book. Please take off the book. The book. Okay. Your books. Okay. That's okay. That's great. Um. What about number seven? Hang. And your jacket, jacket at, please. Okay. That's great. Number two, please take out the crash. The trash. The book. Okay. That's right. Number nine, uh, please put Your box, your, your cigarette. cigarette, your cigarette out, your cigarette out, and the last one, turn on the light, the light, light, please. That's right, that's very valuable. Okay, that's something important. You know, the time is actually going so fast, you know, that we will continue uh, tomorrow with more practice, more vocabulary, and some statements using this uh, the pair words. Okay, so. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us right here in the class today. And I hope to see you 
tomorrow. Have a beautiful night to all of you. Enjoy this time. Thank you, teacher. Good, Good night. night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, teacher. Thank you very much. Thank you, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Have a good time to all of you. Enjoy the love this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>